The chain rule has many applications within machine learning. It's used for gradient descent in general, which we will talk about in a huge amount of detail in this Machine Learning Foundation series. It is probably the one concept that we discuss the most across the entire Machine Learning Foundation series. So we'll start digging into it a bit in the upcoming segment on automatic differentiation, which will wrap up this Calculus One subject that's coming up pretty soon. But we're going to continue talking about gradient descent all the way through to the eighth and final subject of this Machine Learning Foundation series on optimization. So plenty to cover there. But the chain rule is one of the key pieces that we need to make sense of how gradient descent works. And gradient descent is found in a huge number of machine learning algorithms from simple regression models all the way through to the most sophisticated deep learning models. It's very, very important. And a specific application of the chain rule is the backpropagation algorithm, which is related to gradient descent, but it allows us to descend the gradient, to apply gradient descent in situations where we have a neural network. So a specifically, as these neural networks become deep, as they have many layers, we call them deep learning networks. And this backpropagation algorithm allows us to chain together all of the layers of our neural network and apply gradient descent to the entire thing efficiently. All right, so that gives you a sense of why the chain rule is so important. So what is it? Well, it's based on the idea of nested functions, which are also known as composite functions. Let's have a look at one here. So let's say that y is equal to 5x plus 25, all cubed. Well, we can break this up into two nested functions. So we can let the inner function be equal to some variable, let's say u. So this inner part within the brackets, let's call that u, 5x plus 25. And in that case, then the outer function now is simply y is equal to u cubed. So y is now a function of u, and u is itself a function of x. So the chain rule is an easy way to find the derivative in a situation where we have nested functions like this, which again are very common in machine learning. You can think of deep learning networks as a long chain of nested functions. And so what the chain rule allows us to do, whether it's just two nested functions or hundreds of them or thousands of them, we can cross out like terms and find the derivative of our outermost variable as a function of the innermost variable. So in this case, we can find dy dx by calculating the derivative dy du and then du dx, and we can cross out du and that leaves us with dy dx. So let's look at a real example to make sense of this. All right, so let's say we have this function here where y is equal to two x squared plus eight all squared. We, according to what I showed you on the preceding slide, we can break this up into two nested functions. So the inner function, we can set that equal to u. So u is equal to two x squared plus eight. And then the outer function is simply y equals u squared. So we can now calculate the derivative on these two separate functions separately. So let's start off with u here. It has two terms and the second term is only a constant. So it will become zero when we take its derivative. We can ignore that term. The first term is something that we can differentiate according to the power rule as well as the constant multiple rule. So x squared becomes x to the power of one. We move the two in front of x, multiply it by two, and that gives us four x as the derivative du dx. And then separately, 
we can calculate the derivative dy du, and it's a piece of cake. All we need is the power rule here. u to the power of two becomes u to the power of one, which is just u, and two jumps in front of the u and becomes a two, so we have two u. And now that we've done that, we can grab u and multiply it out. So we just substitute in 2x squared plus 8 in for u here, and 2 times each of these terms gives us 4x squared, two, so 2 times 2x squared is 4x squared, and 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, finally, now that we have broken up our equation into a pair of nested functions and separately calculated the derivative of those two functions, we can now chain these two derivatives dy du and du dx together into a product. So we multiply them by each other. And when we do that, the du in the denominator here will cancel out the du in the numerator here, leaving us with dy dx, the derivative that we're ultimately after. And so we simply drop in dy du in here, we drop du dx in here, and then you can multiply out. So 4x times 4x squared gives us 16x cubed, and 4x times 16 gives us 64x. Boom. Now, between the rules we covered earlier and the three advanced rules we covered in the most recent videos, we're ready for comprehension exercises that blend all of the rules we've covered so far together.